Hello, uh, I'm Carolina and I'm here together with uh, La Ruga at the beautiful Purple Valley. And we are breaking down the third series and we have reached now posture number six. Seven. No, seven, sorry, <laughs> seven, yeah. Posture number seven. Yeah, yeah. So we'll take a look at Durashasana. This is the standing pose of the leg behind the head uh, postures, the last leg behind the head posture. So we'll go ahead and get started. Starting in downward facing. Inhale, jump through. Hooking the leg around the arm. Taking the leg behind the head. Really getting it secure, especially since we're, we'll be standing up. And from here, inhale. Coming to standing, feeling secure. Working really slow. Head up, looking up. That's two, three, four, five. Exhale, lowering down. Going straight into the arm balance here. And jumping back. Inhale. Exhale. Left side. Really working the leg back. Lifting up. Looking up. One, two, three, four, five. Rolling down. So with standing, this can be rather tricky because we feel the weight of the leg behind the head and then we have to stand fully up. So it can be hard to manage the balance at first. One reason why I really recommend coming up to standing really slow, because usually if we stand really suddenly, then things kind of get thrown mm -hmm. off. Um, so it can be rather tricky, tricky to to maintain the balance if we work a little bit too quickly or swiftly. So I really recommend standing very slowly to feel the nuance of the balance as you work your way up to full standing. So when you are in the posture, then you're trying to straighten your leg. So the leg is really strong, of course. The standing leg, yeah. yeah the standing mm -hmm. leg is really strong. Yeah. And then to create space by rolling your shoulders back. Uh, you know, what I feel also uh, mm. when I'm in the posture is that I'm sinking a little bit too much and sometimes I need to use my hand to create a little bit more of leverage so I can feel that my chest mm. or my rib cage is opening a little bit more. Is that okay to do? Yeah, yeah. I think that's okay to do for a certain stage and I used to do that but now I'm always trying to evolve and not get too accustomed to, to using that type of leverage. Now. I really try to ground and solidify that presence through my standing leg. And then one thing that I tend to do to get a little bit more upright is the elbow on the side where the leg is behind the head, I press mm -hmm. my elbow into the thigh there. So for instance, if it's the left leg behind the head, I'm, I really press. And that's where I feel like I get a little bit more of the chest rising upward as I continue to ground through the standing leg. So again, it's not a deal breaker to use the thigh, but I think if you've been practicing for a while, it's good to evolve from that and to, you know, again, lifting the chest, pressing that elbow into the thigh, um, even just setting up the leg behind the head really secure in the beginning is really important. Really lay the head back to, again, even with the drishti, it's kind of also helping to secure 
the leg as we look upward as well. Um, even just keeping the leg that's behind the head, keeping that leg very active, pointing that toe really helps too. And the bandas? Oh yeah, yeah. bandas are always going to be yeah. important. Always going to be important for creating stability. Mm. So the drishti, because uh, I've been looking at my nose. No, upward. It's upward. Yeah, okay. lifting the head. It might be because I find that it's, so it's basically towards your third eye? No, well, or, you know, sometimes those are kind of, this, they seem like the same drishtis, but no, we look upward, yeah. Perhaps I can ask you a, a question about drishti here, because uh, what I have noticed when I'm trying to look upward, or mm -hmm. up towards my third eye, mm. when I'm in certain asanas, that I cannot really breathe, and it becomes oh. very difficult for me to keep that drishti. Yeah. So automatically I'm changing the point of focus or gaze to my nose. Oh, I see, I see. So do you think that I should continue to <laughs> look up, <laughs> or should I look at the nose? This might be a silly question. Well, I mean, Nazagra drishti, the nose drishti, is the default drishti. Yeah. Like if that's something that, if we're unable to really access the full drishti, Nasaka Drishti is the, yeah. the the default, like I mentioned, but there seems to be a little bit of a block. I don't know, like, because when it to look up, the fact that it's impeding your breathing seems. I don't know. I've never heard that before. No. <laughs> so it's something to revisit, you know, to see if you can release that block, and see if there's a way that you can relax a little bit more, and. Um, so, for instance, what I would do is maybe start with the full drishti. If you really feel like you're losing it, then maybe take it back to the nose mm. if you feel more comfortable mm -hmm. with that. But I think you've got to challenge yourself to, to look, take a look at what that block is. If we don't confront certain blockage blockages, or it could be mental, it, sometimes it's physical, it could be, you know, then they don't tend to clear if we don't confront them. But again, you don't have to, you know, cause yourself to suffer no, you know, so no. you can at least kind of touch upon it. If it's if it feels like things are just really getting worse, then you can kind of go back to your default. But for things to change, we've got to start practicing. You know, so. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, you're Thank welcome. You.